Hello and welcome to Learning Redstone part 8. In this part I want to talk to you about toggable flip-flops. What is even that and how do they work and why do we need them? So let's talk about that. First of all, what is a toggable flip-flop? Well, actually it's pretty much just a lever. So toggable flip-flop just means we give an input and it gives a constant output of a signal and we give another input and we don't have any signal anymore. So we just toggle between on and off. But since the lever needs player interaction, we want something that works a little bit better, like for contraptions and we can automate stuff. So we just give an input and then we get a constant output. But how do we achieve that? There are various different variations of a toggable flip-flop and I will show you some, not all. Some only work in Java edition, some in both and some even just in Bedrock. There are many more designs than this, but I will give you a big overview and then you can choose what you can need of this. Or if you need something else, I'm sure you can find something else. So this is our first design. I use a notebook as input, but we could also use like a button, a block removing or a redstone signal. So it's just the observer uh, watching a block changing its state. So here we hit the note block. The observer detects that, gives a short output and the piston spits out the redstone block. And by that we have a constant signal on the redstone lamp. And once we hit the notebook again, the lamp turns off and we don't have a signal anymore. That is pretty much a T flip flop. This only works in the Java edition because the spitting out of a block only works in Java. That is not a feature that is in Bedrock. So we could also break a block to achieve that or place a block to achieve that. And um, we can also use a lever if a signal to achieve that or any other source from a redstone input in here. And they all work pretty much the same, but the redstone block would also power other things that are directly next to it. So you could also use a composter or a cauldron with a comparator next to it. So we can read out that there is something in there. So the composter has to have some things in there. So you get this texture in there and then we get a redstone output from that. You don't have to build it exactly like this in a straight line. You can change the blocks a little bit around to fit your likings more. Like this, we move a block up or down to get the output. Or we can even stack it all up onto another and push this block up to get the output here. So you can see you can change around the blocks a little bit to better fit your needs. While these are a little bit newer designs, these are a little bit older and we get to even older designs later. But these designs as well only work in Java edition. So here is pretty much the same, except we don't use an observer. Instead, we use this piston to cut off the signal. So we only get a one tick pulse that then again lets this piston spit out the block. And this block gets powered by the torch, so we get a constant signal out there. You could also replace the lamps by like another redstone line or something you want to power like constantly. And these designs all pretty much work the same. So here we just work on the retraction. That is something I don't think I have again in this design. So this is called a rising edge and this is called a falling edge. What is that? Let me explain real quick. So the rising edge means as soon as we press the button, the button goes like into it. We get our first redstone signal. We then get the output pretty much instant. While the falling edge is on the depowering of the um, button. So once the piston retracts again, we get the change in the output. Both have their use cases and there is even something like a dual edge. So we get it on both ends while pressing the button and then once again 
when the button depowers, but I haven't added that in this showcase since its rare cases are there, but they are like rare. So this design is pretty much the same. We just position things a little bit different. And this one is, I think, the oldest I could find for a um, T flip flop. And when we press the button, the redstone block will change the state into this position once it comes back, which makes it also to a uh, falling edge bonus, uh, T flip flop. <laughs> Once the button stops powering the redstone line, then we have the change in here and you could take your output. Oh, I even placed a redstone lamp behind there. So now we have an output. Now we don't. Even though for most of these designs, we also can change the order of the blocks a little bit around. What we can't actually do is having the redstone block right next to the piston since the redstone block would always power the piston. So what we had to do would be picking a slime block to help us out here. So we have to put a slime block next to the piston and then add a redstone block. That way we could use it as intended. So this wouldn't work since the piston won't retract. So keep in mind, you can use this in pretty much every configuration, except upwards, then you have to use a slime block to not power constantly power the piston. These two designs here are dropper hopper based and work in both editions, Java as well as Bedrock. So we pretty much have an item in here, just one. And when we press the button, item gets sent up into this dropper and this comparator reads out the signal and when we power this again the item will go into this dropper get sucked out by the hopper and placed back into this dropper so it circles around and with every second redstone signal we give here we get an output over here and this design is pretty much the same except we rotate it a little bit so we get our input down here and our output from this dropper. But we still use droppers facing into the hopper. The hopper faces in here and the dropper faces here and this one faces up so it spits it into this block. So we circle the item around and every other signal we get an output over here. For all of you who think Man, I really want my T flip-flop to be silent. Well, there's a silent version of this. So this is pretty much using only redstone basic elements like um, the classic torch and repeater, some redstone dust. But um, since we lock this redstone repeater, we can get a constant signal now and change the state into constantly powered and we don't have a signal now. So we basically change the state of this repeater with this contraption. So one time it's now constantly powered, so the torch is turned off. And now it's constantly depowered and get locked and the torch stays on. This one is a weird one and it only works in the Bedrock Edition, but it still works and it is a T flip flop. So we have a dispenser with an empty bucket, a water source in front of it and a boat sitting on the water. Then we add pressure plates around the water to keep the water in place. And once we hit the button, the water will be retracted from the dispenser and the boat activates the pressure plate. And that gives us an output over here. Since this is not working in Java, I could show you, we would just <laughs> have an underwater boat. But in the Bedrock Edition, the boat actually floats up back again, so it would depower this. The new 1.21 update will bring us also a new T flip flop. This works by using the copper bulb and a comparator. So you can just power the bulb and the comparator can read out that the light is turned on and will give a constant signal. And when we deactivate the lamp again, the comparator doesn't get an output. So this new thing 
will give us a very tiny version of a T flip flop. Isn't that great? And with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. And until next time, bye!